Hi, uh, I wanted to record another video showing some of the latest changes in the fourth release of uh, Ye Olde SteamOS, which I still haven't decided how to pronounce. So, the two main changes in this, beyond just updating the packages to match the latest release of, uh, of Valve's SteamOS installer, are LVM and Linux Software RAID. So um, I've created a fresh virtual machine here to show it off. I've given it two virtual hard disks. Uh, and if you're using VMware, just a quick note, make sure that under the display settings, you enable 3D acceleration. Uh, otherwise, it doesn't do anything there. So I'll just go ahead and start up the installer. So RAID is something a lot of people are aware of um, but don't necessarily know in great detail. Um, there are basically three types of uh, three types of RAID controller available. There's hardware RAID which you won't have unless you have a very expensive uh, add-in card for your computer where uh, you have a dedicated processor just for handling uh, all of the RAID calculations and things like that. Uh, these are cards typically from companies like LSI, uh, Areca, um, Threeware, uh, people like that. Uh, and these are cards where your operating system just gets presented with what looks like a single disk or a set of single disks and the specifics of how those disks are dealt with is done in the background by the controller card. Uh, the second type is what's called software RAID, pure software RAID, where your operating system, uh, Windows, Linux, BSD, whatever, handles the question of mirroring or striping or whatever by itself. So it doesn't require any kind of special hardware uh, all it needs is a bunch of disks available and then your OS, using whatever management tools you have, uh, will let you handle that. And the, the last option is what's called, uh, what the Linux community often refers to as fake RAID, where you have an interface that acts as if you have a, a real hardware RAID controller but all of the actual RAID operations are being done by a, um, a driver, t uh, typically a Windows-only driver. Um, and those are things that you find on board, like Intel RAID, uh, for example, is all done at the driver level, not by an actual dedicated processor. Now, the changes I've made in the fourth release uh, mean that you can now use the pure software RAID. You've always been able to use the uh, the hardware RAID, the, the LSI type one, uh, and I've added the option for doing the, the software RAID stuff. Uh, the fake RAID stuff, which is what you'll need if you want to dual boot uh, with a fake RAID controller, so if you've got Windows on Intel RAID and you want to dual boot that, then you'll need to wait for the fifth release. Um, it's already, uh, the code for that's already in place. I haven't tested it though, and I don't have the means to test it because I need basically some spare hard disks and a real computer, and I don't have those things for testing on. So uh, if you want to see that tested, then feel free to donate large sums of cash. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be marked as a completely untested feature in the next release. Uh, so uh, I might as well move the video on a bit. So I'm going to load up the uh, the partition editor, same as before. Uh, you can see I've created two quite small virtual hard disks. So I'm going to, in both cases, uh, initialize them, give them a partition table so I can start to edit them. And now there's a bunch of free space. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a uh, a RAID naught uh, 
a raid naught uh, array where raid naught is the uh, the type of raid that doesn't give you any security uh, but it does give you more performance in theory uh, it doesn't give you more performance if you're doing it in VMware I can tell you that but uh, for the demonstration it should be fine so uh, first thing you do is click to create a new partition this is all the same as we did before uh, but the use as should be a physical volume for RAID and we do the same on the second disk use as physical volume for RAID done so now configure software RAID write the changes yes create an MD device where MD is the the name for the, the RAID system in Linux so we create a new device we want it to be RAID naught, and we want to use these two uh, partitions to create it. Uh, the Linux RAID system, the software RAID system, works on a partition level. So as long as you just have two or more uh, partitions, you can RAID those together, and they don't necessarily need to be um, identical drives or uh, in the same places on the disk or whatever, it just needs to be the same sizes um, for this to work. Uh, and then we're done, so we hit finish. And now you see we've got another uh, hard disk listed as RAID 0 device 0, which is 64 gig, which is twice these 32 gig uh, partitions. So the next thing I'm going to do, uh, the problem with the Linux raid thing and the prop and this is really an extension of the problem with hard disk partitioning in general is uh resizing is a pain in the ass and moving partitions is a pain in the ass and there are many things that are a pain in the ass with the basic partition scheme that computers can handle so several operating systems uh including linux use or optionally use a, uh, a system where instead of using the standard partition scheme you layer on top of that a much more uh, sophisticated partitioner. Uh, so on Windows I believe this is called dynamic disks. Uh, on Linux you use what's called the logical volume manager where your logical volume manager, uh, LVM for short, can take any number of partitions across any number of uh, drives and basically just glue them together into just one big amount of empty space or in fact any number of amounts of empty space and then you can uh, create partitions on there as you see fit so this would be useful for example if you um, if you add a second hard disk to your system and your system is using LVM then rather than needing to worry about which files go on which drive and things like that with LVM you could just say okay just take this whole drive add it to my existing LVM and expand my existing partitions to fit onto it and the system will just transparently write across both drives um, without any need for um, any need for thinking any need for reformatting it, it'll just work uh, the reason we care about LVM right now is the Linux software RAID system only works on a partition level as I said but that means that you either need to create a RAID device for every partition you want to have so let's say we wanted a boot partition, a home partition, a swap partition, a recovery partition we'd need to end up creating eight partitions setting up the RAID on all of them and they wouldn't easily be resizable in the future so all of that is incredibly painful so it's much easier to just create the RAID volume and then stick LVM on top and use LVM to manage it so we've created a RAID volume and now we're going to set that up uh, for use with LVM so you see now we have a 64 gig partition marked for use with LVM we'll configure uh, the logical volume manager do we want to write changes? yes Okay, so you can see it says one free physical volume, not used physical volumes, not volume groups, not logical volumes. I'll explain each of these as we get to them. So physical volumes are partitions, basically. 
So we have a partition that isn't assigned to anything is what this is saying. So and a volume group is one or more physical volumes. So we're going to create a volume group and we're going to add a physical volume to it. So we're going to call it Steam VG and we're going to stick in that partition from earlier which is a RAID partition. So now you can see there are no more free physical volumes because they're all in use in volume groups. So you see one used physical volume, one volume group. Now we can create some logical volumes which are basically creating partitions out of your uh, space on a volume group. So create a logical volume in Steam VG, we will call it root and we will make it 10, 10 gig. Uh, let's create another logical volume again on Steam VG. We will call it home and it'll be 54 gig. That's fine. You hit finish and these new uh, LVM partitions that we created show up in the partitioner. So we'll take the home one, use as the XT4 mount point home done root use as ext4 mount point root done so you see at the end of all of that we've just created two partitions a a, a, uh, a 10 gigabyte uh, root partition a slash partition and then a 54 gig home partition both of those partitions are part of an lvm uh, group and the lvm uh, group is sitting on top of a RAID naught array which is built out of two separate hard disks. So the end result of all of that, you hit finish, uh, it's complaining that we don't have a swap space. You'll notice I haven't created all four of Val's recommended partitions in this little video. Um, my installer will deal with that. If you don't create the partitions that Valve expects, so if you use LVM for anything other than home, if you use MD RAID for anything other than home, and if you don't have a boot, uh, a boot recovery partition, a slash partition, a swap partition, if you do anything there that deviates from what Valve expects, it will just skip the recovery partition stuff entirely. It won't be uh, listed to you. It won't. Basically, it's not there to screw up. So yes, you run the risk of breaking your system and not being able to recover it, but you wouldn't even be able to capture the recovery partition um, as is because I haven't managed to get Clonezilla, which is the software that does the recovery partition stuff, to actually work when you do anything mildly interesting. So this warning here is complaining about the lack of swap space. Do we want to go back? No, we know what we're doing. Do we want to write the changes? Yes, write changes. Uh, and now it'll just carry on installing and I'm going to stop the video because you've seen this installer before. Yeah, it's pretty much identical to the last video I did. But um, that should give you a brief rundown of how things are in the fourth release and what I've added in, in this fourth release. Uh, like I said, the fifth release will contain support for the the Intel RAID and similar RAID, uh, fake RAID as it gets called, but I won't have tested it and if it breaks I'm not really going to be in a position to help unless someone uh, appears out of the blue and donates enough for a couple of hard disks uh, I'm kind of stuck uh, because I just don't have the hardware to test that kind of thing. So um, thanks for watching and Hopefully it all works fine for you.